Coming to the stage is someone who literally needs no introduction. I want you to know this woman is so accomplished and so fierce and so fabulous. She's been featured in prominent publications such as the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, Marie Claire, and Automotive News. She just finished inking her second book called Crushing Mediocrities. Please welcome to the stage, Lisa Copeland! Hi viewers, I'm here at Eagles Town Speakers Bureau chatting today with an award-winning sales strategist, best-selling author, one of the top 100 women in the automotive industry, and of course, keynote speaker, Lisa Copeland. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely, I always come to New York. Yes, so I have a couple questions for you. Let's just dive right into them. Sure. So my first one, you're known for being one of the most important faces in the automotive industry. Why did you choose to go into that field? What attracted you to it? So I started in the automotive industry very young age, right out of college. Okay. And so I did my first stint in the automotive industry for the first 10 years. Then I left the automotive industry because I needed to raise my children. And um, I came back about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And so at the time why I did it, I saw an extraordinary opportunity for two things, to mm -hmm. relaunch the Fiat brand to the mm -hmm. United States, and number two, to revolutionize the auto industry. I came back with a fresh set of eyes and I realized that I wanted to put a new face on the industry. I wanted to show that women, minorities, and millennials could make a difference. And um, yeah, and, and, and inspire people to buy cars, mm -hmm. you know? And, and we did that at, at my small dealership because, you know, I, I think if, if you've got, you know, it's all about um, who's, who's presenting your product. And it got to the point where people in the community and customers, they were actually rooting for us. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they knew it was not the same old buying experience. You know, they had a relationship. Um, they rooted for our brand. They rooted, they rooted for our dealership. They rooted for our sales teams because um, it was much more diverse. Mm -hmm. And I just think in any business that you have to embrace diversity. Absolutely. Yes, because the face of America and America's buyers, which a lot of them are millennials and we know that, is it's um, changing. It's changing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, whatever, whoever's selling your product, whoever's customer facing has to look like, I mean, I've always said the demographic of your sales team should match the demographic of um, your customer. Mm -hmm. And so I was really passionate to do that. That's amazing. On top of the fact, I just thought it was a great opportunity for a lot of people that normally um, are overlooked. Right. Yeah. So earlier today, and you just touched upon it, you said you wanted to bring back Fiat to revolutionize the automotive industry. Right. Why did you choose Fiat specifically? Well, it, that that was the only opportunity at the time. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> by default. Okay. <laughs> um, so regarding your keynotes, which by the yes. way, I watched a couple of clips of your keynotes and so captivated by not only your energy, but your message. I thought it was just phenomenal. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. And you talk about um, something that really stuck out to me in your message was you talk about the difference between being fearless and right. fearing less. To fear less, right. So what would you say to someone who's frozen by fear in the uh, frozen by fear of failure in the business world? Right. So let's start with the fact that when you're to be fearless is to be reckless, right? When you're fearless, right. you're reckless. You know, you're driving cars at 200 miles an hour down the road. Doesn't matter. You know, you, you just go for things. And that isn't a way to live. I mean, there's a reason that, that we have a fear mechanism inside of us. Right. And I do believe that fear, every single person on this planet, is affected by fear. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a fear of failure, but as many times as a fear of failure, it's a fear of success. Because it's just as terrifying for individuals sometimes. Once once they've worked hard their entire career to hit that pinnacle, and now all of a sudden it's like, oh wow, you know, now I'm gonna be held accountable. Now I've right. gotta hit the quota. Now I'm gonna have to work more. Now I'm gonna have to manage sales teams. Whatever that may look like. And so <clears throat> what I speak on is to fear less mm -hmm. because you see I don't think any of us can get away from fear but what we right. have to learn how to do is to repurpose it and to manage it mm -hmm. so repurposing it so many times and managing it is taking bite-sized chunks if this is what you're afraid of you know put together an action plan of what your next step will be and it might just be a small step it mm -hmm. might be a baby step but eventually you will get to the point where you learn how to manage fear again because I don't believe that fear ever goes away and if it does right. you're in trouble because then you, you, you right. become reckless. It's a natural instinct. It's a natural instinct and it's a good instinct. It, it's what keeps us safe. Mm -hmm. But we also, so many times in our business, we use it as a crutch. Well, mm -hmm. I'm afraid. You know, I'm, you know, I'm afraid to ask for the promotion. I'm afraid. 
well, no, you're not afraid. You know, there's, there's probably something behind you going, you know what, maybe I haven't worked as hard as I'm supposed to work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you use that as a clutch. And so I really work with sales teams and organizations to learn how to, again, baby step through fear, get unstuck mm -hmm. and push through barriers that are holding you back for success, not only in business, but in life. That's great. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yes. So we're going to play a little game. Okay. And I just have three statements, and you're just going to tell me whether they're true or false. Okay, fair. I'm put you to the test. Okay. So the first one. I sold them. I didn't build them, just so you know. We'll just see. We'll see about okay. that. Okay. So Fiat has manufactured more than just cars, including military vehicles and aircrafts. True. True. Yep. Absolutely. Number two. The United States is the second biggest producer of Fiat's. False. <laughs> And number three, the first Fiat was sold in 1878. False. And then um, I have a bonus question. Oh, okay. So these are scary ones. Fiat is an acronym. Do you know what it stands for? I, I do. Uh, yeah, but it's F-I and then Automobile Turin. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, I'm going to butcher this, but Fabrica Italiana yeah. Yeah, Automobili but, Torino. So, yeah, because they're actually built in Torino. Right. Well, the original ones mm -hmm. were, were built in Torino and designed in Torino. Thank you for sitting down and chatting oh, yeah, with me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Questions. Yes. Be sure to follow Lisa Copeland on social media. Yes. Yeah, I'm everywhere. You heard it. Follow them all. Okay. Thank you.